The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and with me, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hey. Who I think I forgot to introduce last week because, you know, I was a fuck nugget. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or at least my brain was. Like, God damn well, it. You were just too excited about the fact that we were actually doing a podcast again. <laughs> yeah, because at that point it had been like, how many months? Shit. But it's good. At least a, it was at least a month and a half. Yeah. But now hopefully we'll have a more regular schedule coming up. And, and, I, and I say this now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this week, the week we're recording, the week this is going to be released, Valentine's Week. Oh boy! Mm-hmm. The one time of year where, 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 uh, not consumers, but um, well, I, I guess I could say corporations, stores, they put out everything that say you have to buy this shit for your significant other, and if you don't have one, then go find one or, or something like that. And it's like very basically they're commercializing your relationship. Or I think as Nash put it the other night on Radio Dead Air, they're selling you your relationship. I think that's how he put it. Ah, uh, so. This is one of those things. We did we did cover something about this last year, except it was more positive. You know, we we were more talking about our our uh, mates at that particular point. And now this year, <laughs> we get to go to the other end because because yeah, there there's just so much bullshit spewing around this that we just simply did not cover last year around Valentine's Day and relationships in general. Um, don't don't get me wrong, relationships in and of themselves they're a great thing. If you're into that, if you're if you're a romantically inclined person, they're great. If you're aromantic, then well, well, you just don't give a shit, and that's fine too, you know. But but there are there are the negatives, and that's what we're going to be talking about this time, at least for the most part. I do, I do want to start off by saying that yes, I am in a relationship. I am in a happy relationship, and just like <laughs> pretty much every other topic. I feel like he's bound to say something this show now that it's going to get him in trouble, and that's why he had to preface this. He's yeah. like, I'm, I'm going to get myself in trouble, so I'm just saying now. I love it's, it. it's possible. It's very Peggy, possible. Peggy, you're awesome. Just yeah. getting that out of the way. No, no, she is. She is. But but I did want to preface that because um, – oh, damn. I, I, I lost my train of thought almost. <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, I, 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 what I was going to say is um, – with all the topics that I do bring onto these shows, a lot of the times I do tend to vet through her, so she she kind of knows what to expect going into this usually, so so I'm I'm usually okay. But I just wanted to put that out there for everybody else. Yes, I am in a happy committed relationship, well committed non monogamous relationship, which seems con- which seems um, um, contradictory, but it's not. But we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about you know the more negative things, and that's at least for me personally, that goes to past relationships that just either had bad moments or they ended poorly or that sort of thing. And, and I'm pretty sure we all have our stories to share. Um, but before we get into our personal ones, there is one that that uh, I'm sure one guy just was at the center of a lot of you know bad ended relationships and he's the revenge, revenge porn guy uh, uh Kevin Bollert so so he's he has been convicted within the past week for for this uh, revenge porn site um because that featured thousands of nude photos mostly of women that were submitted without their consent and let's see how many counts 27 felony counts including identity theft and extortion Wow. Yeah, because the way it works is like some jilted ex-boyfriend could be like, you know what, fuck this bitch, and just put put the pictures up there. Say here, you know, I'm gonna show her off. I got all these nudes here. This this was my conquest. This was the woman that dumped me. Go have at it, masturbate to her, that sort of thing. And then if the woman finds out, she can have it taken off, but she's got to pay the site for it. Ugh. I'm just so, reading further. Just like reading further. Oh, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just, I was just, I'm just reading. Going to evolve into a personal story that's actually kind of funny. Okay. So, go I'm ahead. Just, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just reading further into this article, and it's just uh, how about it's like not only display the the photographs of men, women and men, but also their names, the cities where they lived and worked, and other personal identifying information. So, yeah. 
Wow. This is like this is like doxing level two at least. Because yeah, is... there, there is doxing, which they don't usually include nude photos taken on personal phones. You know, but they include the addresses and everything. This ups the ante a bit. Now you know what they look like. And not only that, you know what they look like without their clothes on. Right. So it was just Jeebus. Yeah, that's a that's a wonderful wonderful way to live your life. Oh yeah. Very wonderful. Uh, so, uh, what were you going to say, Holly? Yeah, so um, this whole idea of revenge porn is um, not really a new one. I mean, only in the idea that now you have these pictures to share. But it turns out the idea of, um, you know, having the Internet do shitty things to your ex is, is not a new one at all. Yeah. When I was 16. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was on the internet, and uh, I had dated this guy, and we broke up for many reasons, um, but mostly he was just a creepy, abusive asshole. Oh, dear. <laughs> and uh, one night at, like, 2 in the morning, my dad yells at me to get up, and I'm like, what? And he, like, I walk out of my room, and he's facing the other direction in the hallway, like, he thinks that I'm somewhere else in the house, and I come out of my bedroom, obviously having just woken up, and he was like, oh, that's weird. Uh, get on the phone <laughs> then. And I was like, okay. And it's this guy who says that he got my phone number in a, um, a sex chat room. Oh, wow. shit. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, no, I I was in bed. Did did I, I apparently no. have a conversation with you? <laughs> like, I, I I definitely don't understand this at all. Wow. Uh, I don't I remember distributing my personal information that way. Right. The I, amazing thing, like, I'm like, you know, I'm 16 years old, and. <laughs> You know, he, he probably didn't know that at all. But the weird thing is, my dad is the one who answered the phone, and the guy stayed on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, like, yeah. like he was he was very nice about the situation, like told me how he got my number and, and let me know. And, and at that point, we figured out that it was my ex-boyfriend um, posing as me in a chat room and giving out my phone number and telling men to call me, you know, that oh, I was up for, wow. some, oh, God. So for, for some phone sex. So um, it's, it's, it's like the digital version of, like, those call so-and-so for a good time on the bathroom walls, basically. Except for I think everybody has, like, you know, at least as long as I've seen it. So, you know, going back to the 80s, mm -hmm. everybody knew that that was always a joke. Yeah. But this was this was like a, somebody was posing as me, saying, "Hey, call me. I'm up for a good time." So um, dear. But I, it it just amazes me to this day that like my dad answered the phone, <laughs> and this guy stayed on. The, my dad was like, "Hang on a second. <laughs> uh, is Holly the there? Guy I'll wait." Stayed on the phone, you know, like. <laughs> It's like now that's gotta be awkward, if, especially if the guy on the other end he's 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 expecting you to pick up and then immediately. I'm, I'm just imagining this this sad. Right, just... like he, he came from a sex chat room, so like in my adult life, I'm like chances are he was already getting off, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So my dad answers the phone. But yeah, so it, um, you know, the fact that like revenge porn is now a thing, I'm like, well, I, you know kind of had to expect, like, that was going to happen yeah. someday. It's like, ah, uh, but uh, I, I am really glad this guy is, is convicted. I think I think this says what he's facing up to, 20 years in prison for it. Like, well, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, very good, because fuck this guy. Just, just you don't do that. And it, it, Well, it's, it's one thing to, you know, post personal, uh, pri you know, private pictures of people online from, you know, just because you experienced a bad relationship and to create a web space to host that kind of garbage. Mm -hmm. But it's an entirely different thing, like we were saying earlier, to, to include personal information along with it because, well, you're just putting it out there now for anybody. And everybody is on the Internet. And, the, the yeah. yeah, do the math. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm, 
thinking that this, this is starting to come to me. This is kind of like slut shaming the website, basically. It's like it's like these women did all these nasty depravity things, or even maybe maybe not so nasty. You know, maybe their parents would see it. Maybe they would send it to their parents, and their parents would be like, "What kind of little girl did we raise? We didn't teach you to do that," or that sort of thing. Who knows? But I don't know. But, it's just weird. I actually just realized this this whole this whole website is kind of like a combination of basically any revenge porn website and like Spokio or something. Yeah. So it's double fucked up. Yeah. Spokio, remind me what that is. That seems familiar, but I don't remember it. <laughs> uh, it's the website that uh, has – it basically just gathers personal information about you through all these various ways and then just posts it online and then says, like, well, if you register, then you can find out any personal information on anybody. Yeah. And you can stalk them and dox them and do whatever the fuck you want to them. So you have to send them messages to – I mean, and it's it, – when I went through and looked at my profile, it had addresses going back to years. It had me like connected to different relatives and I had to go through, I had to break all of those connections and get them to remove years and years worth of addresses. Yeah. Which sounds like something I should probably see about doing if I haven't done it already. I, for all I know, I could have known about it before and already done it and just kind of don't remember because so much other shit has happened. <laughs> Yeah, but, but, I did it once before, like removed my information and then went back, and it was there. Yeah. So, yeah, mm. you just gotta be tenacious about it. Yeah. Then, and then, you know, beyond the revenge porn thing, which, like I said, we're I'm gonna reiterate one last time, if you're the kind of creep that would take pictures that either you've taken or your mate has taken and sent to you or what have you, and putting them online. That 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 is skeezy as fuck. You don't do that. That you know, it doesn't matter how much he or she has broken your heart or how bad the relationship ended. You don't do that shit. That's not cool. You know. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, that's that's been a big thing this week too because that um the whole story isn't out on it yet, but that wrestler posted a picture of some other woman and it's fiance flipped out and posted naked pictures of him in response and yeah i was i think rosenhacker was telling me a little bit about it last night I, I was trying to get some other things set up as well but i remember him mentioning about it um, yeah basically what it looks like is that his fiance found out that he was cheating on her and so she posted um the naked selfie that some other woman had sent to him and then posted his naked selfies. Oops. Mm. Yeah, that, that 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 still does not seem that just no. I mean, yeah, you know what, you want to get back at somebody for cheating. You wanna you wanna make them pay for cheating or what have you, fine. There there is just some places you really should not go. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't care that he said, um I hate my fiance and, uh, you know, I love you so much and, you know, I hate my life and I just want to get away from her. Like, turns out you're always wrong if you post revenge porn. Always wrong. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, because it's just a breach of, it's a breach of trust. It's a breach of, I don't even know what the word for it would be. It's just, it's it's not cool because you did, they did not give you permission to, po to post that stuff because, you know, Freedom of speech people, you know, can post whatever pictures they want of themselves online as long as they're not doing anything blatantly illegal. But you shouldn't really fucking – you just shouldn't do that. I mean, like the whole issue with Jennifer uh, Jennifer Lawrence, you know, last year about when her nude photos were leaked and the response that she had where she didn't apologize for taking the pictures. She's like, no, I mean, I took those pictures because I wanted to share them with the person I was sharing them with, but then some, you know, scumbags decided to hack my personal information and post them online, and now everybody's like, well, but you shouldn't have taken those pictures then. What did you expect? Yeah, oh, people who say things like that, oh, God, I just want to slap them. I, I, I just, ugh, it's like, no. The answer to stopping, the, 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 see, the question is, how do we stop revenge porn? The answer is not stop taking naked pictures. And it's usually directed at women because they don't care if men do it. I mean, hey, men go around putting their dicks anywhere they want to online anyway, so of course they're not going to tell the men to stop doing it. Women, however... Right, oh, well, no. that's the weird thing about this most recent story, was that people have been more than happy to repost these revenge porn pics. 
And people are like, wait a second. So it wasn't cool to repost the Jennifer Lawrence pics, but it's okay because this guy did something shitty to repost his pics. Why is that fair? Yeah. Oh, wait, look, I have a single standard sitting right here. And wait, 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 it's giving birth. It's now a double standard. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just, ah, George Carlin was right. One standard will do just fine. Let's let let can can we work towards that, please? If it's wrong, if it's wrong to share Jennifer Lawrence's nude pics, then it's wrong to share this other guy's pics. All right? It, 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 right. It, you know, and and, and we've all had bad breakups. We've all, we, like, let's face it, everybody in the world has had a bad breakup where they've just wanted to be like, I want you to suffer. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I want bad things to happen to you. Whether you really feel that way or not, there's still that part of you because that's how human brains work, that yeah. we get these intrusive thoughts, whether we actually mean them or not, that say, oh, I, I hate you and I want something bad to happen to you and I want you to suffer. And mm. But right. what do you really get out of it? Um, well, for me personally, I got absolutely nothing out of it other than just bitter feelings and, and – and... And, and I've, like, talked about it a few times, like, uh, you know, whenever we would talk about Dude Bros either here or on other shows or whatever, you know, I can speak from a place of experience because I've been there. I've been I've been at that point, especially after a breakup. I bro you know, this one girl broke up with me, ended up getting with this guy who she's even told me herself that he is an abusive asshole, you know. And the, the, the idea that she just would not – leave him at for me at the time i didn't really have much of an understanding behind the psychology behind it but it, it just kind of drove me mad and i was pissed at her because in my mind at that time i thought she was stupid i mean and and i'm, and I'm sure some people could probably see how one could come to that conclusion but i but now i know better that there was more to it than than just that you know there might have been well maybe she was afraid of leaving him which that should have been a sign when later on she and i got caught in the ballpark but that's a whole different story that was that was the whole that was the root of that particular story was that particular fear, and I did not take it well. And of course, with me not taking it well, that just kind of kind of messed things up with her too. And it's just, oh, I am not proud of it. <laughs> Nowhere near proud of it. Oh dear. But mm -hmm. that that's part of where my experience comes from is you know things like that, and and I reacted poorly. I'm not gonna lie, I reacted very poorly. Uh, and but you know between me and that particular ex-girlfriend of mine, we, I mean things did get better to a degree, and then she turns out to to kind of just let herself completely go to shit, and it's like, and it's it's one of those things where it's like I want to do something, but at the same time it's like, you know, is, is it is it worth it? Is it worth the time? And it might be, it might be. Uh, I don't have any way of contacting her unfortunately, but. From all intents and purposes, from what I've heard, she's not been in a good way. And who knows? Maybe I could help. Maybe I couldn't. I don't have any way of contacting her. Uh, I've probably talked myself into a circle and into a corner, so somebody <laughs> take the reins from me real well, quick. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's one of those weird things about relationships that no matter how they end, sometimes you find yourself being like, oh, but this isn't you, and I wish you could be better, and you're not, and how do I deal with that? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've definitely been there where I'm like, the person who I thought I was dating just completely changed. And I'm like, but you're better than this. And I tried to hold on to a long time for that. But but you know better and you're better than this. And this isn't really what you're like. And at some point I had to be like, but this is how you're choosing to be. And yeah. that's not worth my time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the... To be perfectly honest, the only true, like, committed relationship that I was ever in, I was in it was when I was in college, and it was this 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 woman who I, you know, we, we hooked up. She honestly kind of pursued me and, like, was very sort of forceful about it in a lot of ways. But, you know, she had a lot of qualities that I really admired in her, but she also had a lot of qualities that I was, like, at, at first really willing to overlook – but then they just kept piling on, and it's just like, wow, I can't help you. Yeah. I can, I can, you know, maybe try and stay in contact with you. You know, I can, like, maybe talk with you on uh, an occasion. But no, I, I don't want to be in a relationship with you. You are, and I, I honestly hate to hate to say say it like this because she was bipolar, but you're crazy. 
Like yeah. you, you are really just, you're beyond my help. And she, and you know, it, it, it hurt, you know, when we had, when we broke up, I mean, I felt, I felt bad about it the way I, I approached it, but, and she, you know, felt really, really terrible too. And I just was like, well, I'm sorry, but just getting out of this relationship is not, you know, is, is what needs to happen because there's just, we're not, we're not compatible for each other. We're just straight up not. And she ultimately ended up proving that by, uh, you know, in the next like couple of years, just, you know, in how we stayed in contact, I would post something, you know, like, like on Facebook, just like a sort of in a vulnerable moment, like, Oh my God, I'm feeling so down. And then she would comment like belittling my quote unquote manhood, you know, wow. however you want to put that. And it's just like, wow, okay, I, uh, I just, you, and I actually, like, I would, I would, you know, message her and be like, uh, if you do that again, I'm going to unfriend you, and I'm not going to refriend you. And then she unfriended me, uh, uh. based on that. And then she tried to refriend me, and it was just like, no. <laughs> uh, no. No, I can safely say I do not want you in my life anymore. Yeah, I, I will say that, you know, with, with a lot of the stuff you talk about, I am definitely... Definitely uh, um, um, understanding a lot of it because same same girlfriend that I was just talking about when we were like initially in our relationship or whatever got to a point to where I I, I don't know if she intended to do it or or not but it got to a point to where I felt like that you know no matter what problem I had you know hers was always worse and it wasn't like this big over dramatic oh you haven't lived my life type of way you know it was just kind of very subtle like like yes i know you have this problem but i have this 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 and this and and this is so much more worse than just you know the fact that you don't have this or what have you you know which bear in mind she she does come from a you know a more poor more disadvantaged family and compared to me but at the same time <laughs> You know, while while I I do obviously sympathize, I you know I I will bitch to the, my dying day about how bad the the lower classes, so to speak, are are treated. That doesn't negate the, any particular problems I have, especially emotional ones. And that was something I wasn't getting out of it, and it went all downhill from there, which I already mentioned. Uh, but right. yeah, you yeah you talking about that kind of just reminded me of all of that. So I was like, yeah, I, I can relate. <laughs> no, and you want to know how we actually broke up? Because she broke up with me for, like, the twelfth time in about four months. Yikes. This wow. was her tactic. Yeah, whenever we would get into an argument and it would just be, it would get heated, she'd be like, oh, okay, we're, we're broken up. And and then the, the very next day she would call me up or, like, meet me somewhere and be like, uh, I, I didn't mean it. I really didn't. And it got to a point, honestly, where she, uh, you know, we were on the phone, we were having an argument, and she, and she said, okay, well, how about this? We're broken up. And I said, no, we're not. And then she hung up. The next day, she <laughs> called me back. It was, was like, so I didn't mean it. Uh -huh. And but that was, yeah, that was like kind of the tactic that she used to to try and like, I guess, emotionally manipulate me. And it worked on more than a few occasions. But I started becoming, you know, immune to it after a while. And I, I had, to, I told her straight up, the next time you say that, you better goddamn mean it. Yeah. And then she did it uh, about a month or so later, and I, I held to my guns. She she didn't quite held sold her guns on that one, but I was just like, no, you, I I warned you, and I can't take this shit anymore. Sorry. It genuinely reminds me of being a little kid, and <laughs> like I was I was probably ten years old, um, and you know, at the skating rink, uh, and this guy broke up with his girlfriend, and she was like, no, and I was like, that's not how it works. You don't get a choice. <laughs> No. She said if you're broken up, you're broken up. You you can't tell him no. There's I mean, you don't have to agree with him, but Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't change the facts. Yeah. It's, exactly. It's, it's like he's uh, done, you're done. Go well, get over yourself there. You know. Basically. Yeah, and it's so it's so funny too because she was older than me. She was like at least three years older than me, and she always kept complaining about how I wasn't mature. Wow, really? Yeah, she's just like oh, you have to call. You're talk. You call your mom every now, like every day, or or not every. It wasn't every day, but it was just like she kept, you know, using the fact that I would call my mom and like talk to her. The fact, just the fact that I maintained a healthy and communicative relationship with my mother, mm -hmm. she used that against me. See, that's not bad. I dated a guy. <laughs> See, now we're gonna get into horror stories. Oh, okay, I right. dated a guy whose previous girlfriend had died. 
Oh. Um, because she was on oh. birth control. But the weird thing about it was that he called her mother all the time. Well. What? <laughs> um, yeah. While we're dating, he's like, yeah, I gotta go talk. I can't even remember what the girl's name was now. Wow. I mean, and granted, I, I understood that he felt a little guilty about it. Mm -hmm. She died um, because she had a reaction to the birth control pill. Oh. Which she oh, was wow. only taking because she was dating him. And it's Ooh. like, there's part of me that was like, okay, yeah, I understand that. And then there's part of me that's like, no, I just feel like I'm the replacement for this girl. And you're going to still keep talking to her mom all the time. And this is weird. Maybe perhaps you are not ready for another relationship yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that whole relationship ended up being a train wreck, but. <laughs> oh, dear. Just, just. Uh. Was, yeah. Oh, man. But, oh. But he, was, like, he ended up being a good friend. Like, he was one of my good friends all, like, most of the way through college. But, it, yeah, just. Dating was a, a, a terrible, terrible idea. Yeah. Like, pretty much any time anybody says, I love you within a few days of knowing each other, I'm just like, no, you don't. No, you don't. That's why I made the rule that I'm not allowed to say that for, like, the first 90 days. It's like yeah. a return policy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. No, like, no, no, no. If, if we break up or or anything like that, I can't get that upset about it because it, the return policy is still valid. I'm just putting it back on the shelf. Yeah. Right. And you know, <laughs> to, to sort of go back, I mean, that was a, a mistake that I made with that uh, that relationship that I was talking about because I said that to her fairly early on, and I was ex it, it was mostly just out of excitement because she was like the first real girlfriend I'd ever had. I mean, I'd had, you know, I, I had relationships here and there kind of but she was the first person who was ever like we were really seemed to be in love and i was just like i was excited about that and it was something that i i, I wanted and it's something i still want but i'm not quite as out to get it now as i was then yeah and especially yeah no no i'm i'm never i'm not gonna say that until i'm absolutely certain that i can get <laughs> get a return on that because, yeah, once when we broke up, she she threw that in my face and was just like, but you said you love me. It's just like, yeah, I thought I did. And it's just like, I hate saying that because I know it hurts, but it's the truth. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that, that's always the worst when, when it has to come down to that. Yeah, been there, done that. My worst, my worst one in that respect, though, it was when I was working at Walt Disney World on their college program thing. Uh, which basically, for those who don't know what the college program is, you they, they go and hire college students from across the country. They provide, you know, like like you know, they provide like a dormitory where they take part of your paycheck out every week for like rent or whatever. And you you get to work at Disney, you get into all the parks for free, that sort of thing. You can get discounts on certain things at Disney, whatever. And you know, of course, while you're there, you can also take classes at their at their little. Disney U thing or whatever. I opted out of the classes because I just wanted to go down there and work and just be away from the taint. Um, so, you know, but uh, in that particular point, in fact, it was around Valentine's Day that particular year, I met this girl on the bus. We started talking. We went back to my place. And, right, we, you know, it, it was all set up because, you know, we were, we were horny enough. And then she asked if I love her. I was a dumbass. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was a dumbass and not thinking with my upper head, and I said, I think I'm starting to. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And long story short, I in the in the end, I well, though I didn't think realize it at the time or even wanted to admit it, I pretty much used that to get in her pants over and over again. I am, again, not proud oh. to admit it. Like I said, uh, yeah, yeah. You you see me bitch know, about like, one of those guys. You see me bitch about one of those guys. I was one, so I'm kind of like bitching at past gomers, like, dude, what the fuck? Yes. See, that's one of those things where I'm like, no, but it goes both ways. Like, she's the one who is like using sex to bribe you to say it. Yeah. So it's like, who's really at fault? Well, you both are. Yeah. That that I I can agree with too. Like uh, you both got the thing that you wanted out of it. She wanted you to say that you loved her and you wanted sex. Yeah. So it's like, all right. <laughs> it's, yeah. 
It's weird. Yeah, it also didn't help that that we we actually did you know date for a while. In fact, there's even like old footage that I put up on YouTube like years ago of like a day at like Epcot or whatever. So there there is footage of me dating this girl, and and what ended up killing the relationship was I told her that my best friend my best friends typically are female, for those you know just just so everybody knows. And I told her that my best friend was going to come down to visit, and I wanted to just spend some time with just me and her, you know. She got insanely jealous. Not not, not like stalking me and, and wanting to knife me or anything. She just got, like, really pissy and really jealous. And I'm like, I can't handle that. <laughs> uh, so that plus the fact that I, I was using her for sex. Anyway, that, that just kind of just... Uh, and you know what? That's not even my worst story. My worst story was... Um, I like how this has not even just turned into, like, <laughs> our dating horror stories, but, like, horror stories of other people dating Gomer. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, hey, at least, at least, at least this particular one, this, this worst one, I don't think I did on purpose. I don't yeah. think I caused it on purpose. Um, but there was a girl, I dated her while I was in high school for a little bit. Uh, and then she ended up moving away, and at that particular point, long-distance relationships wasn't really a thing, or at least not as far as I was concerned, so we ended up breaking up anyway. Um, but then she came back here, I want to say it was about 2005, and she was like, yeah, I'm going to come back here, I'll see you, and all that good stuff. So we came back, we did the thing, and and we weren't officially an item at that point, but you know, we were hanging out doing things, and I, I had thought I had made it clear that we're not officially together, we're just, you know, hanging out, we're just very comfortable, and sometimes we, we, we have sex. And then I met another girl, and the, the one that came back in 2005, the one from high school, she not only got jealous, she made it clear that she wanted to kill the both of us at one point or another. And like she was angry, or like she wanted to kill you? Both, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and at, and at one point, the three of us were, like, driving around everywhere. Because at, at one point, we were all, like, kind of hanging out and all that good stuff. We were driving around, and she tried to throw herself out the backseat of my car. Wait, wait, wait. So you're fucking two different women at the same time. Well, no. And you, well, no. And you get them in the same car together? Well, like... no. Well, no. One, I, was only, I was only doing one of them. Uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, I, like I don't mean the three of you were in bed together at the same time. I mean like you would do one and then you would do the other, but like. Well, no. At the time I had met the uh, the the girl I was with at the time, you know, I I'd made it you know I made it clear that you know yeah I'm with this girl now you know that sort of thing and so the other girl and I we weren't doing anything. So, but, okay. But, okay. But, but I had thought we were all becoming friends. You know? I was like, why why would you do that? Like, if, if you're not clearly polyamorous, why would you ever do that? Like, you know, are right? asking for trouble. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, hey, looking back now, yeah, yeah, I see that. But, you know, I was a little bit more naive. Like, okay, you know what? You know, introduce the two. You know, they could become friends. They, you know, they're both bisexual. Who knows? Maybe they maybe they might get attracted to each other. Who knows? You know, who knows what was going through my mind then? It's ten years ago. <laughs> it's, it's weird because I've had relationships where, like, I I – had a friend with benefits as much as I hate that term. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, but a friend that I was, you know, having sex with, who I, I would, like, introduce to other people. I'd be like, oh, he's such a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I mean, I really like him, but, the, I mean, that's not going to be a thing. We just, in the meantime, like to have sex. But, I mean, he's a really great guy. You should you should meet him and hang out with him and, and go out with him sometime. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because hey, you know, and, and 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 you know that's another thing about the you you know the, the the quote unquote friends with benefits thing. Like if you're talking up somebody to them, and they'll be like, well, how are they in bed? You can tell them. You can play them up that way too. But that's I mean that's the difference between what I did and what you did. Like oh, yeah. yeah, you were in you know, despite the fact that you were like, oh, this wasn't a relationship, you still treated it like a relationship. So then when you turned around and were like, oh, but I'm seeing this girl now, I can understand her justifiably being like, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 yeah, I can understand, I can see that. 
Yeah. It's like, uh, that whole thing was a mess. Because there's, there's still this whole, and it's the one thing that I agree with on all of the stuff about modern dating, about like this whole, what's, we're talking, what does that mean? I mean, because there's, there's now this whole gray area of we do all of the things that, you know, we would traditionally think of that couples do, except for we're not dating. Yeah. It's like, uh, all right, well, then what are you doing? I mean, okay, so you don't want to call this person your boyfriend or your girlfriend, but, I mean, you are dating. Yeah. <laughs> and, and thankfully, in situations that I've had like that, um, you know, I've I've only had one really bad experience like that where he was like, but but we're not dating. And I was like, uh, okay. Finally, I was like, all right, then we're not dating. But he kept acting like we were and then was upset when I was like, but you said we're not dating. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of those things. Like like I, like I said, my, my particular situation, it was a bit of a mess. Like I said, she kind of went, I mean, yeah, just anchor, justified, sure. Um, literally wanting to kill us, not justified. Uh, right. Trying to throw herself out the backseat of my car, also not justified. We ended up Baker acting her for a bit. For those who don't know what Baker acting is, it's a thing in Florida, at least at least I think it's just in Florida, where uh, if somebody is you know going to be is going to be uh, in a mindset where they could harm themselves or other people or what have you, you can have them committed for a little bit. Um, you know, just, just kind of, you know, for a space to kind of, I guess, clear their head or what have you. It's not meant to be a permanent thing, but it's meant to help get them some kind of help. So, but, so she was like legit, not right in the head yeah. is what you're saying. <laughs> All yeah. right. Yeah. I started thinking it. crazy. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so we did that and, and, you know, yeah, yeah, that, that whole time was a mess. Holy shit. You know, How many of your exes are you friends with? Um, let's see. I know there's at least one that I talk to on a regular basis. Uh, several, several of my exes I am friends with on Facebook, um, and I, I think that's about it. If I was put a number two, and I would say, I would say maybe at most five. I think. Uh, it, like percentage wise, where does that fall? Would you would you say? Uh, percentage wise, let's see. Considering, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, six. I'd say probably about fifty percent. Okay. So, so it it can be done, and and it can be done well. Just sometimes. Eh. I'm probably still, um, you know, at least friended on Facebook. Like I have some sort of contact or you know, acquaintance style relationship with with most of my exes. Mm -hmm. Um. But I mean, there are some who I'm I will probably never speak to again. Um, yeah. I dated this guy off and on in high school who was like, uh, who ended up proposing to me over the phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for many years, I hated getting flowers uh, because every time he fucked up, he would send me flowers. Ah. And I was like, no, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm tired. The last time he sent me flowers, I was a senior in high school, and I took them to school, and I left them there. <laughs> 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 I was just like, no, I'm fucking done. I don't, I don't care anymore. Like, I think at that point he had, he had kissed a stripper or something, and I was like, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you very much. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I kissed a stripper. I wasn't a member of my. No, no, no. What happened was, was she was doing a strip tease and she <laughs> fell and, and her she caught her. She, oh my her god! Lips the full so yes, the, I've, the I've the had the I accidentally had sex with her before too. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. So this was a different guy that I dated. Um, they all tripped and it sprang out and it was already there and she was already there and right, then, like, you know things just happen. Um. Wow. We broke up, and he was like, but I still really want to have sex with you. Keep in mind that at this point, so far as I knew, he was a virgin. Right. Um, and and we had avoided doing sex, be having sex because of that. Right. So it, it was like, yeah, that's fine. Like, if you're not ready for it, you're not ready for it. That's cool. Um, and then we break up after 
a bunch of drama, including showing up at my house drunk. Oops. Um, and he had to drive like a half hour to get there. And so oh. I had to like lock him in the sunroom. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> away from the rest of my family while he sobered up, because I like my family wasn't gonna make him get in his car and drive home, so right. they were just like, "That's fine, he can sober up and leave." <laughs> yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah. So we break up, and then he tells me that uh, he he accidentally had had sex with this girl while I was away getting my lifeguard training, and I was like, well, "What?" Like, you slipped and it fell in. It turns out it was in the back of a car. And it was with um, another guy who was a friend of ours. Whoa. And I was like, I was like, wait, wow. what? And the girl was in high school. Uh, oh. I was in college at the time. And both of the guys were older than I was. Oh, dear. By like a year yeah. or two. So I was like, really? Really? <laughs> so... And he's like, yeah, I mean, she's just, I don't know why I did it. Uh, you know, she's she's not nearly as good as you. And plus her tits stank. And I was like, what the wait, fuck? what? <laughs> <laughs> like, forever the thing that I will take away from this. I was like, so you did it with a stinky high school girl in the back of a car with a friend of ours. And you think that now I'm going to want to have sex with you? No. Just no, man. Uh. No. Roll, roll. Oh, oh, you have a cold now because she had a cold when you hooked up with her in the back of the car? Too fucking bad! Yeah, oh. it's like, sorry, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, you, you go into a relationship as a virgin, fine, you know, you want to have sex, make sure you have sex with the person you're dating, you know, or at the very least, talk to that person. If, if they want to, you know, if they want to get some experience elsewhere, talk to them about it. Communication, people! Uh, it's hard. You can work it out. You can work out something to where you both can be comfortable having sex with each other in the end. It was so weird because it was like I was like, yeah, I just I don't think that we should see each other anymore. And he was like, yeah, I agree with you, um, except for let's have sex. And I was like, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, but I, I want to have sex because I had sex, and uh, it turned out that I didn't really uh, enjoy it. Uh. <laughs> well. I guess you made a bad choice for your first time, didn't you? Yeah, well, see, that's what happens when you have sex with somebody with stinky tits. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, just, just, if my first time was with somebody that had tits that smelled of elderberries and my face was implanted in them, well, it's not going to be very, me well, it's going to be memorable, but not for the right reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that would, that would scare me off of motorboating. Just no. No. Oh. But yeah, so there there was one other thing I'd, I'd actually put in the file, and it kind of fits with the with the theme a little bit. We can go over it really quick. Um, Oops, I accidentally had sex. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> well surprise no. sex. Yeah. Well, well, I'm pretty sure some of these people accidentally had sex. Um, I'm pretty sure Ken Ham's parents did. Um, no, oh. no, 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 no. Uh, but this one is from uh, ProLife365.com, and as you can probably guess, yeah, it's one of those sites. Uh, the title of this article, which was posted, uh, well, by the time this goes up, it'll have been uh, almost a week. Um, is your porn-addicted boyfriend fit to become your husband? Not a chance. Because, as, as we all know, if you watch porn, then you're imminently not dateable. Okay, having not read this and only hear, hearing the title, mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's just slim this title down a little. Is your addicted boyfriend fit to become your husband? No. No. If you if you legitimately have an addiction, yeah. uh, you definitely have some other things to take care of. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that I will give. That I will give. You know, because right. if, if it Although is I, I'm, that's I'm that, have... I haven't read this article yet, so I don't yeah. know if they actually mean addict or if they just mean somebody who watches. Right. I have. A, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that these people have a very loose definition of the word addiction. Yeah. 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 I mean, some people would argue that I have a porn addiction because I have almost a terabyte, and it's not because I'm addicted; it's because I'm a fucking digital hoarder. <laughs> Apparently, I mean, you know, they host that stuff for free on the internet. You don't gotta save it to your computer. I know. <laughs> there are times where I'm not on the internet, but 
But but then again, porn is not the only thing I hoard too. You know, I hoard like a whole bunch of pictures. Like you get get stuff from Tumblr. It's like, oh hey, cute kitty picture. Whoop saved. Oh that that cute little stitch animation. Whoop saved. You know that sort of thing. Just for my own perusal later on. And and sometimes I do. You know, but um, yeah. but that just makes me a hoarder. And and you know what? It's a lot easier to hoard digital something than physical something. So you know. This is true. Yeah. So. Uh, so it starts off, any single ladies out there, listen up. You should end your romantic relationship with your porn-addicted boyfriend. Uh, I, I would say get help for him, but don't necessarily end it. You know, if, if he's beyond help, then yeah, but... but well, I mean, yeah, but if he's got an addiction, you know, then try and, like, help him find help for his addiction, maybe? At least before just cutting ties from him and being like, well, I just don't want anything to do with you. I mean, not to say that you're under any obligation to, you know... To, to help out a person other than just being a good Christian? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that, 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 that's a good one. And <laughs> this next part is bolded. Any man who views pornography thereby disqualifies himself from being proper marriage material. Well, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and that, that's where, that's where it, I get a little bit of iffy from this particular article because – like what was it? what was it? One of you said, uh, you know, a loose definition of addicted. This yeah, might exactly. Be it right here. This might be it right here. <laughs> you view porn, you have an addiction. He's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as I as I have admitted, I am a digital hoarder. I don't look at it every day. I don't always have time to look at it every day. So I I I just don't. Uh, and even if I do, maybe I would rather play something on Steam. I just scrolled through this this article real quick while you were talking, and mm -hmm. yeah, this is yeah. All right. <laughs> well, uh, it was funny too because I didn't even really realize what kind of a website this was uh, until like I just like scroll up to the top again. It's just like pro life three uh preaching the okay 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah loose definition very loose yeah. Uh, the first reason they give is he's self-consumed. I'm, I'm just going to try and hit the major bolded parts whenever I can. Uh, let's see. Self-consumed. Your point addicted boyfriend views women lustfully, including you. Oh, no. A man views his girlfriend uh, lustfully? Yeah. Like, that one, I'm like, um, he... Huh? <laughs> what? Yeah. You know what? And guess what? I'm pretty sure that... And, and I'm pretty sure this is targeted towards women. I'm pretty sure these women that this, this article is targeted towards... I'm pretty sure they look at men and even other women with a lustful eye themselves. Maybe they like porn. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, I mean, just even how hypersexualized everything is in this 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 world, it seems, and how like how commercials are all hypersexualized and like using scantily clad women and men to sell their products. Mm -hmm. Well, no shit, people are gonna start getting those kinds of ideas, even if they do, you know, even if they're Christian or if they're, you know. If their religion, in some way, looks down on that kind of activity, sorry, it's just going to be a natural byproduct of existing in this world. Yeah, it just is. Uh, let's see the next one that they um, have. Unless you're asexual, then then you just then you don't have any of that to worry about. Exactly. Uh, the next one under he's self-consumed. Um, he may be critical of your appearance. Um, if he is, then he's a shallow fucker. You know, unless. Yep. Unless you are asking for a critique, or if it's something that just just honestly does not look good, and it's not because he's comparing you to something else, it's just you know, yeah, that dress is that is you know the holes just in the random places like that. They look like it's just been worn out, you know, that sort of thing. But beyond that, if it's just you know, you come out in this like sexy top and 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 booty shorts, or maybe not even booty shorts, you know, just some like tight fitting jeans or whatever, you look damn good, and he's like. Well, you don't look you don't look like this this woman on the porn screen here, so so meh, you know. <laughs> what can you do to look like her? You know, that's the kind of guy you just want to kick in the balls to the curb right there. Just no, you know, shallow fucks, no. Mm. Uh, your porn addicted boyfriend may lock himself in social isolation, or he could just have anxiety. You know, it's just. Uh, yeah, and they, and they and they do qualify it by saying porn, like any other addiction, causes social graces to slowly die away. Unless your addiction is being at parties everywhere. Oh ho ho! What if that's your addiction? 
You think about well, that? I, think, I think in this case, this is one of those, they're, they're actually legitimately talking about addiction. Yeah. Like, I've... I've been in a relationship where, like, I would get home from work and my boyfriend was locked in a, a room with porn. Yeah. Like, literally locked the door, which was really weird because the only one home other than him was the cat. And I was like, <laughs> you know she can't open doors, right? <laughs> like, you didn't have to lock it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shutting the cat out, I can understand, because as Bill Ingvall once put, we know how they see when they see stuff. Oh, I understand out. shutting the cat out. I don't understand locking the door. That's like, what's the the joke about taking the goldfish and putting it in the closet and locking the door? <laughs> like, the fucking fish, it can open the door. Yeah. Hey, it's like, going to forget what you're doing in six seconds anyway. Exactly. Oh. So, let's see. Uh, the next big bullet point they have, you will not meet his unrealistic demands. Um, if you have unrealistic demands of your of of your mate, whether you're your your significant other, your spouse, whatever, um, then you need to reevaluate evaluate yourself. And if it's because of an addiction, then you need to get help. Um, uh, so you know, yeah. So they say to the porn ad the porn addict man, all women exist to please him. I don't think those are porn addicts you're talking about. He will inevitably apply this perception to you. This means that if you marry a porn addicted man, that he may, then he may not be able to complete the conjugal act with you. He has conditioned his brain to expect hardcore, fast-paced sexuality. You will likely not be able to meet his desires. Get help. If if that is an actual problem, yeah, get fucking help. Yeah, if, if you just can't, like, okay. So, in the relationship where the guy had locked himself in, in the room, we, like, we probably didn't have sex for, like, ten months. It was a long fucking time. Yeah. Mm, no. That was... Okay, so the previous relationship I had been in, um, we didn't have sex for over a year. Whoa. Now, granted, he was paranoid schizophrenic, mm -hmm. so... Um, but it, it was one of those, like, he also turned to porn, and for a long time, porn just made me really angry because it was like I wasn't getting getting any, and here he was getting off on porn. Right. Like, I, that's one of those situations where it's like, if, if everybody in your relationship is satisfied, I have absolutely no problem with porn. Yeah. However, if you are using that rather than sexually satisfying your partner, then you have a problem and you should stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. Sadly, men feeding on this fantasy of how women act carry this into real life relationships. If you do, again, this is going to be a central theme here. If you do, get help. You know? Yeah, seriously. I mean, if you have, if, if if something becomes a a part of your life that it's just like you you can't go without it, or you can't, you know, you 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 have to do it. You have to do it. Then yeah, it's become an addiction. So at the very least, I think this article is it, it, it inadvertently hit on a very real danger about addiction. Yeah, but but of course, based based on some of the other things I saw, what was it? Was it up near the top? Um, yeah, any man who views pornography thereby disqualifies himself from being proper marriage material. Um, since he is not the one to tie the knot with, don't bother wasting any more time on him. But you know, he might need help. You know, if it's if it, if he's actually addicted, as in he can't go five hours without looking at porn and jacking off to it, he needs help. He doesn't need to be abandoned. He needs a support system to say, hey, let's get you the help you need. And then, yeah. you know, even if you and I don't work out, you'll still be a better person for it. That sort of thing. You know, right. That's it, what you, you know, do. Communication. Communication is the most important thing in these types of situations. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit to the, the closing uh, section of this article. Yeah. It's just like, in closing, you should pray for him to change his ways but still end the relationship. And it's it's just like, well, if that's the one thing that's like, you know, and it's, it, uh, okay. No, then read the next line, because that's the one okay. that really pisses me off. Oh, yeah. Maybe losing a good girl like you will be the impetus he needs to reorder his life. Fuck you. Yeah, Fuck seriously. You. Whoever wrote this. 
Like, come on. Like, you're not even giving the guy a chance at that point. Because by, by this article's, like I said, very loose definition of the word addiction, this is basically saying if you discover that this guy has, like, a porno mag in his house or you see, like, this one thing that he looked up in a, you know, in his search history or whatever, you're basically just saying just just end it. Don't don't bother trying to get him help. Don't bother trying to talk to him about it. Just Just end it. Yeah. God forbid you send him some naked selfies. Oh, like, yeah, right. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Then you wouldn't be a good girl. Like, no. who the fuck are you? Ugh, good girl. There, there are certain people in my life who are allowed to call me a girl. Um, uh. Writer for Pro-Life 365, you are not one of them. Oh, oh, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> and, and of Kukla? course it's written by Kukla? a guy. I don't know how to say your oh, last yeah. name, but you are definitely not allowed to call me a girl. Yeah. Oh, and they just add this qualifier in there, too. Maybe down the road, once he's over his porn addiction, you two might have a future together, but let him sort that out apart from you. Of course, because according to this guy right here, and yes, it is written by a guy telling other women, telling women how what, what they should do if a guy has a porn addiction, because obviously man knows what's best or, or other some other sexist shit like that, you know. But, you know, he's saying, yeah, you know, no, you know, you know, a man has to pull himself up by his bootstraps. He doesn't need a support system. According to what I'm reading here, that I might be reading too much into it, or maybe not enough. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading the exact right thing. Who knows? But that's what I'm seeing. It's like, yeah, he doesn't need a support system. He needs to do it himself. Fuck the support system. No. No, sir. You know, if, if this guy, again, going with actual addiction, you know, not this broad, broad, definition of addiction you seem to have in this article if he actually has an addiction he needs a support group a support system to help bring him up a little bit because no man is a fucking island right and like uh, just to you know, requote that last part of, of this, this 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 bit it's basically saying, you know you could argue it's just like well okay you don't want to be in a relationship with this guy because he watches porn and you know that's just not compatible with your lifestyle that's fine but I okay. I admittedly, I'm not Christian. I was not raised Christian. I don't have you know that background. But it seems decidedly unchristian to just basically say, "I want nothing to do with you until you fix this problem on your own." Because that's like the la that's what it says at the last part. Let him sort that out apart from you. Basically, just leave him alone. Don't talk to him. Stay away from him. Basically, say, basically say you won't get this until you're over your addiction. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, then of course, in, in, uh, of course, in the worst case scenario, the guy will will see that as abandonment. He'll start internalizing all of this stuff. It'll turn into misogyny, and then he'll go start posting on R9K. Yay! Yeah. If, if you haven't read the the R9K text Twitter, oh God. Uh, interestingly enough, that's one of the things Becky and I like to do is is to share horrible stuff with each other. Uh, it gets mm. the juices. That's lovely. Yeah, it gets the juices flowing. Not the sexual ones, but the other ones. Yeah, the <laughs> mental ones. <laughs> what, what really kills me about this is the last one. Um, if you marry a porn-addicted man, he may bring that porn into the bedroom with you. <laughs> oh, no! We would watch porn together? How awful! That is the you worst mean, thing ever! Yeah. You mean we might re achieve some degree of understanding in a relationship? <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, uh, like, if, if a guy needed it to get off every time, yeah, yeah that would be an issue. Okay yeah. that, like, that's a problem. Yeah. But, like, just the idea of, like, bringing porn into the bedroom is a bad idea. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's the best place for it. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, like, I mean, you know, of, of all the things I could say about, you know, the relationship I was in that I was talking about earlier... One of the, the more positive aspects of it was, you know, we would talk about that kind of thing, and she was just like, well, what porn do you watch? And then we would watch it. And that admittedly did not last very long, but it was still <laughs> a thing that we did, you know. We tried it out, and it was just like, okay, that didn't work, but whatever, let's just move on. Yeah. It, it's it's a weird thing for me, because I, admittedly, I've tried it with others before, you know, watch porn with them, and yeah, we had sex afterwards, but... It was like, eh, it's not really something we want to make a habit of, or well, we couldn't at that point. But yeah, why, why settle for for what for for that when you have the real deal? Which I guess could be the argument of this whole thing. But yeah, you know, people people do what they what they do, and as long as it doesn't impede on 
on your relationship, on your social life, on your everyday life, or just impact you as a as a your your health, mm-hmm. then it should be okay. Yeah, definitely. Oh. So yeah, with that, uh, we we are actually coming up on time for this week. Oh lordy, it's fuck it's... that. We didn't even talk about Singles Awareness Day. Oh shit, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, we we are, the end of the show has been put on hold because we forgot to talk about Singles Awareness Day. Holly, you take care. You 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 go. Oh my god. So Singles Awareness Day. First of all, if you bitch about Singles Awareness Day, please just don't ever talk about it to me ever. Um, I've been single on Valentine's Day many many times in my life. Uh, it is, in fact, not the worst thing in the world to have happen. Exactly. And it drives me nuts that the idea of, well, uh, I'm going to complain about this because I'm single and, oh, my God, I, how dare you be happy around me? Like, that's how it comes across. It's like, um, okay, you want to know why you're probably single? Because you're bitter and you complain and it, it's all about you, apparently. I don't need your dumb holiday. I'll go make my own romantic holiday with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nothing says romance there. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and admittedly, again, experience, I've been there. I look back and I look at my past self and say, what the fuck, Gomer? What the fuck? Uh, yeah. oh, well, God. and I don't understand, like, so it, you want to have a Tingles Awareness Day. Like, somebody who's aromantic was talking to me about this and was like, well, you know, can I just reclaim the day for, you know, people who are happily? I was like, no, because the day was never meant for people who are happily not in relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, a day for couples. It's a day for people who are in relationships. And if you if you can't accept that, sorry, there's 364 days that don't revolve around that. Right, this is an ancient Rome, and you're not trying to convert me to your religion. You don't need to co-opt some other holiday. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, what? But like, why? It, so you want to celebrate your singlehood? That's great. Why do you feel like you, to do that, you need to bring other people down? Yeah, that that is that is pretty bad. Uh. And again, I say to my past self, what the fuck? Uh, and I say to the people exactly. who, who are pushing it in, in that particular mindset, what the fuck, guys? Yeah, uh, to paraphrase what I said uh, in the chat before we started the show, if you, you yeah, if you unironically use Singles Awareness Day uh, when talking about Valentine's Day, well, you still have to live with yourself afterwards. Yeah. So just, just remember that. Yeah. And, and and the longer you live with yourself after that, the more you're going to turn to your past self and ask what the fuck was wrong with you. Mm. As I've as I've been doing this entire show. <laughs> yeah, and, and like, and if your whole thing is I just don't want to be alone on Valentine's Day, guess what? You have friends, probably. You have relatives, probably. Um, yeah. Hell, last year my Valentine was my ex. Well, there you we go. We were not dating at the time, but we were like, will you be my Valentine? Sure. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you know what? I I am I am happy to say that I am not single for the second year in a row for Valentine's Day, because you know Becky and I were together last year. We're still together. I, this is honestly the longest relationship I've been in, and it kind of scares me in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> uh, you know, because holy shit, this is new and exciting, and 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 it, you know, and, and and you know, it's it's just you know your regular fears that you're gonna. You know, gonna fuck up something. Even though by this point, I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm I'm okay. But you know that that fear is still there. But mm-hmm. but but I am happy to say that it's been over a year. Second Valentine's Day together. What we're what are we gonna do? We're probably gonna look up look up fucked up videos on YouTube. <laughs> 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 and intersperse that with like the D-pad and Markiplier videos because that's how we roll. Nice. Uh but yes, so uh, so yeah, Singles Awareness Day, cut that shit out. Yeah, just you know, if you're happy single, fine. And 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 like you were saying, if if you want, if you really want somebody, you know, you have friends, you have family members, we hope. And if nothing else, there's okay, Cupid. There's fucking Tinder. You know, you could you could yeah. probably find somebody through one of those, especially in larger cities. Be like, hey, you know, let's meet up at 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 this place here. You know, you know, there you go. 
Oh, so there are options for you. You don't have to sit in your basement or your room or wherever and, and just lament on your singlehood. Get out there and do something. And if you're getting out there and do something and not getting dates, it's not them. It's most likely going to be you. Again, speaking from experience. Uh -huh. So, uh, so with all of that, now, 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 I think we can actually we can actually yes. pull this in. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, which is really good. I'm hearing a lot of noise in the background, and and it seems like the kids are going to be home soon. So. With that said, thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you're on Patreon, you're actually getting the MP3 first as opposed to the video that I've been doing before. Seems it's going to be getting it out a lot quicker, and then I can, you know, I can take my time with the video upload and all of that good stuff. So if you're on Patreon, you're listening to the MP3. Thank you. Uh, I, I feel like I don't say it enough, and I really should. Um, you know, but um, anyways, if we wanted to find Gonzo Link on the uh, social medias, where could we find him? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at GonzoLink. Um, I'm also on various voice projects. I am part of uh, the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. I'm part of Team Brotherhood's abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood abridged. I play the narrator. Um, and I also have my own podcast that I host with Zenith Will Rule. It's called Focus on the Frames, a podcast about movies. You can find that on Zenith's YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review. Yay! Yeah, and, and, and there's actually like an opening animation that was done by a certain animator that uh, yes. I happen to be dating. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, but it still has not actually been uh, used in an episode yet because I am a lazy asshole and I still haven't gotten the third episode off the ground, but we will at yeah. some point. And go. then you will see that, and it looks really, really nice. Yes, it does. In fact, it's, it's she actually uh, made it part of her demo reel. For this year. Oh, awesome! So, so, so if you want to see that, just go look at her demo reel. I think I want to say it's uh, Becky Hopkins design on Tumblr. Uh, if not, just go to Becky Hop on Tumblr, and you know she'll have it up there somewhere. Um, uh, I'll, I'll try and remember to put a link in the uh, YouTube video description thing on the sites and everything, so um, so you guys can look at that. And uh, Holly, where could we find you on social media? You can find me all over the place as Gooky Gox, G O O K Y G O X. That's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, what have you. Um, in honor of Valentine's Day, I have been tweeting from the Find a Tweet Heart account on Twitter. So <laughs> if if you are looking for somebody to tweet at lovingly for the holiday, um, then yeah, go ahead and and find a tweet tweet heart. Um, Find a tweet heart. Yeah. Ugh. Mush mouth <laughs> over here. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> so yeah, send in a little bit about yourself and 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 what you're looking for, and we'll we'll retweet it. And uh, we actually do have one success story from this Twitter account. They've been together like two years, oh, yeah. so that's 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 actually pretty awesome. From that like is. just being like, yep, we'll retweet your tweets. About what you're about, what, what you're like, and what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and if I catch it, I'll retweet it myself. Cause hey, yeah. I want to, I want to do that. I want to, I want to do, I want to spread the positivity, as much as I can. Negative if I have to, positive because I want to. I guess that that's kind of <laughs> my thing there. Um, anyway, there's also my Facebook fan page, Holly Christine Brown, and you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Yay! And now, finally, me. <laughs> uh, uh, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 2 X. I do have my own Facebook fan page at Gomer the Ranting Thespian, which is also the name that you plug in if you want to find me on YouTube proper. I bring this up because I am going to be doing some uh, driving vlogs. I, I got the little thing set up in the card where I could just do that while I'm driving around various places. Uh, right now, it's just driving around town, but who knows? If I get a driving job, those will become a little bit more often. Uh, but those are... Those are uh, just uh, exclusive to my YouTube channel, which, you know, go check them out. I do talk about different things. I ramble a lot, uh, as if you didn't already know. Um, you can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com as well. Uh, rtgomer.com, which, by the way, we just uh, announced uh, the, uh, the uh, new talent pickups by now. Uh, or at least by the time this goes live, we'll, we'll likely have the announcement out. And uh, to the new people, I want to say hello and congratulations if you're listening, uh, even though I've probably congratulated them about five times at this point, <laughs> because I'm really happy with with the uh, pickups we've got. I wish I could have picked up everybody, but I, I worry too much about um, having too many people on board. 
Uh, I don't, I don't want to be so big to where I, I am, I am as, as bulky as some other sites. <laughs> awesome, excuse me. Um, but, um, but you know, so, so I try to, I, I, I try to keep it down a little bit, but, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, let's see, the Nerdvice and, uh, RT Gomer Productions, both also, they have their own, uh, Facebook pages, Tumblrs, etc. And this show, of course, also has its own Tumblr, condeconrtg.tumblr.com. Uh, if you want to just go there right now, it's pretty much just uh, up episode updates. But uh, you know, if we if if we get some audience interaction through there, you know, we can do a little bit more there as well. I would love to see it. Um, but I think that's about it for me. Everything else that you need to know about me, Patreon, Becky's information, if you want to commission her, that's all going to be in the post show bumper. Um, but uh, for now, I'm done rambling. We're, we need to get out of here. I'm hearing kids in the distance. So uh, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for listening. And if you're on iTunes, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff, blah, 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 blah. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link, signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Exhilarate by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.